Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about designing compelling characters efficiently in Clip Studio Paint and presented by Canberra. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items I would like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. There will be a question and answer session with, during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. This webinar will be recorded and the recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, and Cambiru. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash and graphicsly.com. Also, we would like to encourage you to share your Instagram stories, tagging us as hashtag webinar at Cambiru at graphicsly at welcome and at Clip Studio Official. We'll be sharing your Instagram stories. Kambiru is an Alaskan-based freelance illustrator and character designer who was born and raised in the Philippines. He has a degree in fine arts and has a keen interest in developing his personal art style. He is always actively looking for ways to make his creative process more efficient. He enjoys playing uh, JRPGs, collecting art books, and watching shows with top-notch animation. So with that, I'll leave you with Kambiru and his presentation, Designing Compelling Characters Efficiently in Clip Studio Paint. Thank you so much. All right, hello. Can you see my screen right now? Yes, perfect. All right, so hi everyone. Thanks again, Mario, for that intro. And thanks again for this opportunity to share my thoughts about character design. So, hi, I'm Kanbiru. Again, I'm a freelance illustrator and character designer currently based in Alaska, USA. Welcome to this webinar. So today, I will be sharing with you my method of designing characters efficiently using Clip Studio Paint. So to begin, um, here's the overview for this webinar. First, We'll start with some background info about me, then uh, where I came from and how I got started with art. Then we'll talk about how to develop a character concept from scratch. Then after that, I'll be showing you the tools that I use in Clip Studio Paint to speed up my workflow. Next up will be the uh, basics on how to draw the body and some notes on human proportions. And then finally, the drawing part of this uh, webinar. Uh, we'll be designing the head and the costume design for our sample character right here. And once everything is done, we'll have a Q&A, as Mario mentioned earlier. So, all right, let's uh, start a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Metro Manila, Philippines. So, growing up as a kid, I was very much into anime, which were locally dubbed back then. Uh, it has been a habit of mine to watch anime after I got back from school. So these are just some of my faves. More specifically though, uh, my top faves are these three up here, which is Yu Yu Hakusho, Shaman King, and Corona Kenshin. So these shows really inspired me to draw because of the cool characters and interesting storylines that they had. So this led to me creating fan art of these shows. So these are, were my first drawings back in junior high. So digital art was very new back then. So finding tutorials and resources was really tough. So I joined DeviantArt and luckily there were like a couple of tutorials in how to do certain things in Photoshop 7, which is yes, I started with Photoshop 7. Uh, so that was the only program I had back in the day. So around the same time, I got my first console as well, which was the PS1. And eventually I got the PS2 as well. 
and I started playing video games, specifically JRPGs and fighting games. Uh, really love JRPGs. Uh, I just love the characters, how the characters were designed. I love the stories that made me an emotional wreck at times, especially the world of Final Fantasy. It it just really changed how I view uh, games in general. Uh, it also inspired me to create my own original characters. So in my senior year in high school, I made my own. So just to show how I was influenced by the shows and games that I loved back in the day, here's one character, this girl in the middle. Uh, I based her off Yuna from Final Fantasy X, and she's a summoner, and she uses magical cards to summon creatures. Magical cards, which is based from Card Captor Sakura. Also, in the back, this girl right here, uh, it's a girl version of Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. So that was my senior year in high school. So after graduating high school, went to college, took up fine arts, the oldest university in Asia, University of Santo Tomas. And as of this year, the university, uh, the university is around 410 plus years old now, really old. Uh, while in uni, I did a lot of figure drawing, life drawing, mechanical drawing, color theory, some art theory in art history as well. But surprisingly, art history was my favorite course during college. Uh, I was very fascinated uh, with the techniques used by the masters during their time period. And also, uh, during this time, I was doing some self-study on some artists that I, that I admire. Uh, here just, here's just a couple of them. Got here Hirowaki Samura, manga artist for uh, Blade of the Immortal. Range Murata, character designer of Nia Under 7 and uh, Serial Experiments Lane. Uh, Hyun Tai Kim, Korean artist who did uh, a lot of character designs for a couple of MMORPGs back in the day. Takahiko Inoue, uh, manga artist for Slam Dunk, Vagabond, and Renga. Renga is not that famous, but uh, that guy has a special place in my heart just because Renga's art book is actually the very first art book that I owned. So yeah, there's some level of sentimental value right there. So here are some of my original characters that I designed while I was in college. Um, as you can see, my style was all over the place as I was experimenting with a lot of rendering techniques like clean line art, textured backgrounds, even a bit of some painting styles that I tried. So looking back at it, it was like definitely rough, but you know, you learn from exploring different styles of art and it, it it's a good thing, right? If you learn a lot. So after that, uh, I graduate, graduated college, left the Philippines and emigrated to Alaska. So a quick time skip, a decade after, uh, I decided to go freelance in 2020 at the height of the pandemic. And here are my current works right now. So for this too, um, I was experimenting with like rough and scratchy lines for effect. For this one, I was experimenting with the uh, textured grunge explorations and that's for the left side and some soft painterly exploration on the right side. For these two, uh, so these two illustrations I did for an art exhibit in Osaka, Japan, which was held around uh, the last month of last year. And finally, here's some artworks that I've created uh, utilizing some concept art techniques to create illustrations. So on the left side, I was experimenting with the uh, photo bashing for the background. And on the right, I, was, I used Blender uh, to speed up the background design to help complement the character up front. So yeah, that is 
that is my background. Um, now we will begin with developing a character concept from scratch. So how do you uh, create a character, right? So first we start with the character's backstory. Uh, personality, what's their personality, their lifestyle, their motivations and fears, likes and dislikes. It could be as simple as or as complex as you want it to be. So you'll see later that the sample character that I'll be creating is very simple as I'm starting off with just like two key points about a character. Um, you can also use your life experiences or pop culture references as base to help you create your own character. So sometimes I drew, draw inspiration from friends, public figures, historical figures, uh, to create characters which makes them more interesting. So after you've established your character backstory, we'll move on to the physical characteristics of your character. Now what's their body type? Think of their body type. Are they tall, short, wide, skinny, petite, etc.? Facial features. Do they have sharp eyes, doe-eyed, puckered lips, thin lips, haircut, ponytails, bub cut, buzz cut, wavy, curly, their fashion preferences. Are they into gothic, punk, grunge, techwear, cottagecore, and all that? Accessories, do they wear bangles, earrings, necklaces, piercings, and if necessary, Props like bags or weapons like machine guns, rail guns, swords, or an interdimensional staff that summons creatures. Who knows, right? So after all that, after you've collected all that, start gathering references. So here, you would want to search for visual vibes that matches the characters that you're trying to create. You can create a mood board with some images you've compiled like fashion images, character design sheets from other artists, color schemes, patterns, textures, etc. right? So for this webinar, here's the sample character that I would be creating. So about this character, uh, this was actually the very first original character that I've designed back in junior high. Uh, there were just two key points that I had for this character during those days. So that she is a junior high school student and uh, she has a ponytail. Yeah, that, that was it. That was that simple for her backstory back in the day. But now for this webinar, I would be updating this character and we'll be including the following key points. Now she loves taking care of her plants. She's a plant mom now. And she also enjoys Japanese street style fashion and she wears glasses because glasses are versatile. So here are the references I've gathered for this character design. So first off, we got Matoe Ryuko from Kill a Kill. I will be using her as base character design that I will draw inspiration from. Now keep in mind, I wouldn't copy it one-to-one. -one. It's just, you know, the general vibe of the character that I like, that I that's why I used uh, Ryuko as my base character design. So to complete the look, I've also gathered the following pieces. Asuka John jacket, which is actually a bomber jacket that has been adapted into a more um, intricately designed piece. There's a lot of patterns and ornaments added to it. Yellow shoes, yellow orange shoes. Got it from Titus from Final Fantasy X. Red glasses, some Japanese motifs, patterns for the uh, t-shirt and the Suka John jacket. So yeah, that's the general overview of the character that we will be creating. Now let's move to the tools that I use. All right, now that we have the uh, description, the description for the character that we've developed uh, and we got our references. We finally get to draw something. So these are the tools I commonly use to speed up my workflow. We'll start with the brushes. So for brushes, we got two types, 
that I used for sketching, the Millie pen, and the flat watercolor. I'll also be covering how I manipulate shapes as if you're sculpting and drawing it all at the same time by using the liquify tool and the transform tools. So yeah, for the Millie pen, this is the Millie pen right here. So for the Millie pen, I used the Millie pen and the flat watercolor for sketching as it forces me to think of the overall form of the subject without, uh, when I'm drawing without worrying about the line quality of the drawing. As you can see, Millipan is like, it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. It's just one size. Same with the flat water collar. It's just one size. It's just tapered a little bit at the end at a 45 degree angle. So both of these uh, brushes are in Clip Studio, Clip Studio by default. So didn't buy these or anything. So that's for sketching. Now for line art, I use a turnip pen. This right here. It has a taper at the end with a bit of pressure sensitivity. So we use this uh, brush for like precise line work. Um, and it gives me the option to like feather in the lines to get those wispy, really wispy thin lines, especially when uh, the drawing is very detailed. Yeah, that really helps. And now we got the liquify tool. I use this again to manipulate shapes as if you're like sculpting a clay. So liquify tool is right here. There's a couple of options for the liquify tool. Uh, push, expand, pinch, push left and right, twirl clockwise, counterclockwise. I mainly use this three and this two at the end. This two I barely use. So for this, the push is just like, you know, it's fun. You'll see it in action later, but I'm just uh, demonstrating it for now. Expand, pinch or shrink. Yep. So for pinch, it's actually very useful for like uh, sharpening up a, an edge. For instance, you got a soft looking edge like this one right here. It's very soft. You can use the pinch tool to sharpen that up until it's very sharp. There you go. Yeah, it's a fun tool. I use that a lot. So yeah, these are these are mostly the tools I use when I draw. So let's move on to Proportions, human body and proportions, right? So let's talk proportions. So in order to draw a convincing human body, we need to know how to draw body using a proper conventional human proportions. So here we have Andrew Loomis's ideal human body proportions. Keep in mind, this is the ideal version of it and does not reflect reality. It's a good baseline to start with because it's an even number, eight heads, head units high, divided into eight. But of course, you should also try to explore other body types, you know, through observation and by looking through other artists' work and studying how they use shapes to manipulate body parts to their liking. Now, for for this uh, sample character, we'll be using a 7.5 head unit tall. There you go. Is it showing? Oh yeah. Okay. 7.5 head units tall and two head units wide. Oh, so here's the breakdown of the proportions that I will be using for this specific character. So 7.5 heads, uh, Shoulder, uh, the shoulder line will be a third from the second head. Second head, I mean, two heads high, two heads below, I mean. Then we got a breast line, just two heads below, two heads down. Three heads down will be the waistline. Then four heads down in half, half of it will be the crotch line. 
and the arm lens. And we got a top of the knee, five heads down, the ankles at seven heads down, and the base of the foot at 7.5 heads down. So this will be our general guide for the proportions of the character that I will be drawing later. So here are a couple of ways to draw the human figure. So here's the first option you've got, just using basic shapes, lines, uh, squares, circles, triangles. It's great for just starting out the human anatomy, uh, but you know it it can get too stiff and unnatural at times because there's just way too many straight lines, and human body does not have that much straight lines to be honest. So the second option you've got is rhythmic lines, long rhythmic lines to establish the general flow of the human body. It's great for more a more natural looking body, but sometimes it can get too flowy and you lose the structure of the human body, especially those bony parts, which are really hard and very square-like. So um, curves wouldn't just work in those things. So what I usually do, I use the third option, which is the combo. By combining the two to closely resemble, to more closely resemble the human body. So this is the most accurate version, but it does require a bit of uh, knowledge about the muscle groups of the body and the skeletal frame, like the rib cage, the pelvis, you know, you kind of need to learn how those work to be able to use this method. But it is the most complete option that you've got. That's why I use it. So now we begin drawing the character. So here is the base sketch. Plotting down the proportions correctly right there. I will be redrawing this. So, all right. So how do we start drawing this pose right here, this body type right here? First off, we need to grab the, uh, the symmetrical ruler tool. So where do you go to get that? You go here, you got your rulers, tap that. Then you got your symmetrical ruler right here. Next, next you need to just Hold shift and drag down for a vertical line. Now you got your line and you can start drawing. We'll use the flat watercolor. So for this, so you'll notice that when I draw, I just, uh, I'm not that super accurate with it. I just, I just basically throw lines and see what works because later on you will have the option to actually manipulate those shapes using the liquify tool so you don't have to be super accurate right now because you can just edit it out, edit it out later like for this instance right here wait let me fix that i want to fix the waste area so I go liquefy tool and the push option and go a bit wider right there now if you look closely this one's a bit far apart so you just push that in and to further close the gap, I will be using the pinch tool instead. And you can just draw like that. Let's go back to sketching. I'm gonna fix that. Now it's kind of off. So one thing about the symmetry tool is that when you use the eraser, you'll be only We'll only be able to use it on one side, which kind of sucks. So 
what I did was what I usually do when I want to erase both sides instead of you know doing this what I do is I grab the lasso tool which is right here make a selection and hit delete that way I will be able to work on both sides quickly instead of just one side you know it's quicker that way so let's see I'm going to fix those proportions again kind of off right now like these these legs are kind of not working for me I'm going to fix that Got your ankles. All right. Arms. Usually, our and uh, arms have this curve, this general curve line as a guide. The abdominals. Breast. Breast is actually like. An inverted heart shape. Got your circles right here. Eh. Kind of looks uh, way too sharp. So I'm going to delete that. Make sure it's a bit curved. Now the hands is right here. Usually the hand is like, um, if you look at the head, right? It's gonna be from the ha uh, hairline to the chin, usually is the size of the hand. But in this case, since it's, it's in a fist, right? It's closed, so it wouldn't be that big. Fix this side. Oh, there you go. Got to tell uh, fix that deltoid. So the head is kind of off. We have to may have to move it a little bit. So just make a selection and just move it down a little bit. Again, it does not look the same on the other side so we can use the liquify tool to fix that to closely resemble the sample that i did so yeah once you're done with that we move on to the head sketch let's you establish your proportions Okay, close that. Oh, let me fix this real quick. Oh. Uh. Wait, Dude, just a second, just fixing this. Dude. All right, cool. All right, Let's start with the head design. So with the head, what I usually do is, again, start with the Make a new layer and grab the symmetry ruler tool again. Is rulers symmetrical ruler? Shift drag down, and we can start sketching. So for the head, I will start with the circle. Again, you don't have to have you know perfect shapes, just because you do have an option to use liquify. To fix the shape 
So for the head, I usually uh, divide it into three. So this is the middle part of the circle, right? And then divide it into thirds. So this will be your eye line. Nose and between the nose and the chin area, you got your mouth right there. And usually you got your uh, eyebrows up here, in the line. But again, this is anime, right? So we have to like fix the proportions because this is this does not really reflect the ones on the left side. So how do we do that? Use the liquify tool and just grab it, push it in, modify the shapes a little bit or redraw it if you have to. Now, look at those eyes, right? They're kind of doe-eyed uh, versus the original drawing, which is quite sharp at the edges. So what do we do? We can just go down to the liquify tool and use either the twirl clockwise or counterclockwise. We'll see what works. We'll try with the clockwise first. Just grab one eye and there you go. Now, just got sharp eyes. And we can just adjust it again using the push tool to get the general shape of the eye. All right, we're going to erase some parts of it because it's already, there's too, there's too much lines in there. OK, that's a bit distracting, so we remove that. Obviously, it does not resemble the sample. So we just fix it with the liquify tool. Fix that chin. Oh, there you go. Raise some extra bits. That's way too much lines in there. Now clean it up. Oh. There you go. Make it a bit sharper, just to match the sample we got. Now for the ears, delete this extra stuff. For the ears, it's usually a nose line and the top of the eye for the ears. Now you got your ear. Now we'll we'll uh, we'll be drawing the hair. So for the hair, since it's not symmetrical, what I do is go to the layers palette and make sure I, I'm on the layer that I'm working on. As you can see, there's this icon right here that means you have a ruler that is active. As you can see, the purple line right there. So you just deactivate that by holding shift and clicking this icon right here. Now it's off, but it's still there. It's just off. You can always turn it back on. Now you can just work normally without the symmetry on. Oh, fix that quickly. Now let's turn it back on. Have those side bangs in the side. Oh, now there's this one side of her ponytail peeking out. So we turn off the symmetry tool again and draw that part. Turn it back on. And for the top, there's this bit of a uh, cowlick, just a little tiny bit. That is a bit off center. Now the shape is kind of off. So what do we do? We just use the liquify tool to fix it.
All right. Now make a new layer as we'll be drawing the glasses now. So for the glasses, we need that symmetry ruler again. So since we already had a ruler earlier, you can just copy that to the new layer. So we'll be utilizing this ruler right here. It is for this layer. So you just hold Alt, grab that ruler, and drag it to the new layer that you've just created. And now they both have the same rulers. All right, fix that top part again. So that's how I go about drawing heads. Now we move to custom design. Now, for this, uh, step of the process so whenever i design costumes for my characters right i try to think in thirds uh i use the law of, uh, law of thirds rule of thirds i mean um as a compositional tool to create a better looking fit for my character's clothing so for this example right here um i've got these thirds right here so the first one let me just redo this that way you'll see Let's go millipan and white. All right. So what I do usually is create a line down like that and divide it into thirds. So for this example, I use the first third, the top third to align her shirt. Right, and then I use the rest of it. So, oh, there you go, and divide it into three again. For the socks, I know it looks mathematical, but it, it's not really that math mathematical. It's just, you know, uh, a good baseline when you like to make sure your character has a good fit for her, his or her um, clothing. It's like a fashion thing, right? Just to make them look, or just to make them look that they're dressing well, right? So that's how I usually go about this, uh, designing the parts of the costume. So let's redraw this. There you go. Okay. Uh, there you go. Start off with that top part right there. So there's a bit of bulge for the chest area, so it's going to curve a little bit. Go down. Good thing to do is, good tip is that just follow the lines of the body most of the time. like. This area right here, I just followed that. It really helps. As opposed to thinking, where does this line go? You just follow the silhouette of the body. And it usually works well. It's a bit bigger. Fix that again. Now, as you can see here, I got a tangent, and that's a bad thing. You don't want tangents. You have to break it down just a tiny bit and adjust it. That way, it wouldn't create a tangent. 
can move this a little bit make this puff there you go top part of the suka john got your sickle right here so most of the time these are just like placeholders is eventually you'll do line art and clean it up you can just add in like the most minimal stuff just just like a reminder for you that hey i'm gonna draw or i'm gonna just render this using colors later as versus you know actually drawing all parts of it which is not ideal especially if you want to work fast Again, I can choose to line this up here, but as we've used the rule of thirds earlier, it's going to be up here. Like there's a big difference if you place, if you have a t-shirt this big, it's kind of off. If you look at it from far away, it does not, you know, it does not look right. So yeah, just keep in mind. Make sure you have your surge. Nope, too close. Pants. Short pants. Now, as you can see, um, hands usually don't have symmetrical folds, so you can just turn off your ruler and draw it manually without, without relying too much with the symmetry tool for this part. In with that shape right there. See, uh, that's a bit wrong. It's too short, so we can pull this down a little bit. And I want this part to be a bit open. So what I do is just grab the expand tool and just drag that in. Oh, that's so much. Yeah, it's a little bit. There you go. Especially this area needs to be expanded. Just fix that t-shirt again, back to its place. Look at fight tool. Yep. Also, you got this uh, pockets right here. So what I did, again, just follow the silhouette of the body. And it really helps a lot. So for this, I just used the size of her waist, this guide. Got the hands. Now for the hands, you want to just group them together. So you got one hand that can't, I mean, one finger that can't be seen in the back part. So we can choose to just show like three fingers. Oh, fix that. Uh, now legs. Couple things about legs is that when drawing legs, you have to think about. I do have a trick when drawing legs. So let me show you real quick after I've done the lines for this one. All right, legs, right? So when you think about legs, you can draw it by thinking about the letter B. This only works, by the way, if it's in front view. 
So a letter B that is tapered downwards, and that's your leg. Just have to put in the knees right there, and you got the knee. Uh, yeah, that's a kind of wrong. But yeah, that's the main idea for the legs. The main ge gesture, gesture shape. Now let's draw the socks right here and the shoes. So for the shoes, mostly it's just don't have that much time, so I have to uh, do this real quick. But most most of the time, shoes it takes me quite a while to draw shoes, just because I want to make sure the shapes are correct when I draw it. But that yeah, that will that will work for now. E. There you go. So that's how I usually go about drawing the costume for the character. So after that, you move on to flats. Again, these last two steps I have to gloss over just because uh, we're short on time. After your line art, we go to flats, doing flat work, flat colors. So the only thing to remember when doing flats, right? Flat colors is to have colors that is not super saturated. How do you know that? How do you make sure that you're not oversaturated? Make sure you're, uh, I just make sure that my colors are like not above 50% saturation. So how do I check? You got your color slider right here. You got, you can pull out the HLS color space. Or it doesn't matter if you use HSV as well, as, it, uh, as long as it has an S, because that's what's important. S stands for saturation. So for this one, let's grab one color, like this one. As you can see, saturation is below 50%. As long as you're below 50%, you're good, because what that does is it makes rendering much more flexible in the long run, right? When you do shading or um, lights, right? Lighting, because if you go like, let's try maybe that one, right? If you if you use this color, which is very desaturated, that's safe because you can add in more colors and it's, it's still good. But if you go way over saturated, it already hurts your eyes because well, it's not that obvious because the background is uh, bluish gray, but if it's white, it's gonna burn your eyes. So yeah, that's my only tip for doing flats. Just make sure it's a bit satur uh, desaturated, below 50% saturation. And after I'm done with uh, flats, I go to the textures and patterns. So for this, you have two options. You can either do your own patterns, draw it. That's great. I do that sometimes. Or you can grab some from the asset store for Clip Studio Paint, which I, uh, to be honest, I haven't really used patterns from Clip Studio's asset store, but there's a lot of them in there. So yeah, that's just the general you know, idea if you want to do uh, like a lot of patterns for your uh, clothing, you can use the asset store for that. So yeah, this is the final art right here. Um, this is how it's supposed to look like. And this is how it began. So yeah. Um, that's how I generally go about doing my character designs in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, so now let me turn it over to Mario again for some Q&A. Thank you so much, uh, Camiro. This has been a really amazing presentation. 
everyone is really excited uh, so once again thank you thank you and uh, we ask at the beginning from where uh, were you watching uh, this webinar with us so like for example Maria is from England Raina is yeah. from Texas USA nice. Luke from India Marine from France Danny from Canada David from Hungary Marcel South Africa Jay from Sri Lanka Fatima Dubai etc etc Portland oh, wow. New York uh, so wow. all over the world so thank you all who have been uh, listening and watching Kambiru uh, sharing his process uh, so let's go with one question the first one will be from Ines uh, she says hello I would like to ask where do you get your human body and anatomy references thank you human body and anatomy references to be honest Pinterest yeah that's like the most basic answer that I could give you Pinterest is just you know it it, it has everything right just for references but for me I usually I usually do have books as well a lot of art books that I use as references if you want to go the traditional route um, the old guys the old masters from way back in the 1900s you got Andrew Loomis um, Bern Hoggarth is a good one well he's not really a good one because he draws like Tarzan stuff but yeah um, for a um, most recently I was studying what is his name again um Michael Hampton's book which is a uh, figure drawing design and invention that's a good book to start with or Stonehouse's anatomy it's a I believe it's from a Korean artist and it's it's packed with a lot of information about drawing the human body in anatomy so yeah and do you use those online resources of like live poses uh, references I actually do uh, so way back I used to use this website called uh, post maniacs I believe um, they're back and they they've just got a lot of uh, 3d models that you can play around with you know just turn rotate different angles and you can actually use that as reference as well and they actually show the uh, muscular structure of the anatomy so it really does help a lot yeah you can check that out uh, I believe there it's postmaniacs.com um, yeah mm -hmm. and there's another question regarding layers do you have like a layer order for every every your illustrations um, to be honest layers up uh, way back when I was just starting out I was very specific with my layer stacks and it has to be uh, this one's just a sketch this one's just a line art this one's just the colors uh, it does help organizing stuff but right now it does not really help me that much because most of the time I just add up layers just add in add 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 I just keep on adding layers most of the time just just because my pipeline is just so streamlined and fast that I don't really think of layers too much these days but if you're just starting out it it's really helpful if you do categorize your layers and organize it by you know your draft and then your sketch layer on top then your line art on top then your colors etc mm -hmm. and another question from Gabby Fister uh, she says how do you keep creating characters when you're feeling a, a bit or very unmotivated huh that's a tough question well I kind of have to because it's my job <laughs> so that's a motivation for me but if I'm like in a rut uh, usually I just go back to like playing games go back to my comfort games like Final Fantasy fantasy games I just replay games that I loved before or I watched shows that I'm very familiar with that I loved you know it's just like a comfort thing you know things that inspired you before might inspire you again when you rewatch it or you can actually just you know watch new shows that is, is that interests you and that will inspire you back 
and you know burnout is a hard thing so sometimes I do take long breaks as well and that helps a lot if you have to take a break just just take a break <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and uh, a few of our audience have asked if you can uh, show again uh, where to find this symmetry tool and also the liquify tool of course um so for the symmetry tool it's in the layer uh, i mean the rulers so it's right here the ruler icon uh do you see it is it visible yes or is it way too small okay yeah so this is the ruler icon right here and you got a lot of ruler options got a symmetry tool down here and again just turn that off real quick so when you apply it just go to the rulers choose symmetrical ruler and you have to hold shift so that it locks into place and you just drag it down and you can start drawing symmetrically um yep what was the other question again about the liquify tool oh the liquify tool right uh the liquify tool is right here i believe i'm not quite sure where is that it's because it, yeah the i have customized my uh, workspace so uh i kind of forgot where they originally were oh so it's originally a blend brush it's under blending mm -hmm. so yeah so under blending oh i don't see it yeah, I'm pretty sure it's under blending, blend blend tools. Uh, it's so it shows blend right here. Um, so it should be under blending tools. And another Other, question about um, tools. Uh, have you used or do you use the three D models that Clip Studio Paint has? I do use the tools, the three D tools. Actually, I got a lot, but. Most of the time I use other sources for 3D stuff just because uh, uh, Clip Studios is good. I mean, it's serviceable, but uh, it's kind of basic sometimes. So I try to look for like better models. I mean, you have models like this and you can adjust it. But, you know, I, I like those models that has a bit more accurate proportions i mean this is good but you know sometimes i need the real stuff so, so i use like um what was that program again i forgot das 3d or something but i rarely use those tools because I, I like drawing more than using 3d um 3d anatomy tools oh yeah mm -hmm. and here's another question from antoinette uh, how long uh, should it take to create a character from start to finish? Uh, for sketching, for just the con concept phase like this one right here, usually it takes me around three to five hours or so. Just because the main reason is I'm mostly indecisive with what I want. So I do a lot of going back and forth, back and forth with the design. But yeah, for, for the whole project itself, it, it's probably like, eight to ten hours or so just for one design so for one design usually it has a front view a back view a couple of expressions and sometimes a side view as well so i have to draw those yep mm -hmm. that's it and another question was regarding to patterns uh, that you might use for clothing how do you work with them how do I work with them? So for, yeah, that, that's kind of a tough question because it's mostly like trial and error for me, especially for these patterns right here, right? Um, you got reds and purples. It works because it's in the same color family, but most of the time it's really just trial and error. And I do have a specific theme for this, which is Japanese street fashion. So I can pull from that idea and use Japanese inspired motifs, patterns, and it will most of the time look good because it's in the same family. It's in the same motif, Japanese patterns, um, 
warm colors it works well so yeah mm -hmm. and this is not a question but uh marcel says uh, thank you so much you're brilliant keep it up thanks <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of um, um it's not a question but thank thank you so much for the presentation because they have learned a lot and um, thank you i think we are running uh, we're finishing with the time unfortunately time flies uh, but before yeah. we go um can you say something to people who are struggling with their character design creation hmm just keep at it well that's an easy answer but the more complex answer is try to absorb things right just try to learn new things if you're kind of in a rut just stay uh back away a little bit like study i don't know draw landscapes draw still life play a game watch a good show if you're struggling yeah you know if you do those things eventually you'll just have this inspiration and motivation to draw again like for instance you watch a show that you like oh i love that character i might draw a version of that character because that character is cool so yeah just you know just take it slow chill don't stress too much eventually it'll flow and you will be inspired and you will be motivated to draw again so yeah well, thank you so much, Camiro, for those wise words. Um, thank you. Before we go, uh, I'm going to share with you one last bit of information. As many of you asked, uh, this webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channels. So please subscribe to Eclipse Video Paint channel and Graphicsly. Uh, you'll receive a notification once this webinar is available to watch. And also, many of you asked uh, if there are more webinars like this one. And yes, uh, you can check our playlist of webinars in our YouTube channels. So take a look. You will find tons of information, tons of different artists, just like Cambiru, sharing their knowledge and experience uh, illustrating with Clip Studio. And also for more information about the software clip studio pain visit our website clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com and of course uh, to follow camiru on his social media he is on instagram as camiru twitter camiru 88 our station the same and his website camiru.art uh, so with that once again thank you so much camiru thank you it's been a pleasure. Thank you all who shared your Instagram stories. We have been reposting them and we hope to see you next time. So stay tuned and see you in our next webinar. Bye bye. Thank you.